John Dodson, who's here to speak with us. And um, so happy you all came out. Just curious, uh, we already said a blessing, so those of you that came a little later, we already prayed for the food, help yourselves. I'm um, curious who, how we found out about this event tonight. Um, just shout out, what, who told you? Uh, my professor, you voted for me. Which one? Professor mm -hmm. Ananin. Ananin? Who here? Raise your hand if Ananin, Sister Ananin. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Any, did anyone hear a different way? Um, you went to a class. Oh, when, when was that? Um, or do you, or do Today? Family. Oh, okay. So oh, I spoke with the class. The Ananin? Oh, no, information systems. Oh, information systems. All right. Wonderful. Well, my name is Corbin Commander. I'm the manager of Alumni Services. So we love to have guests, alumni, come and speak, um, especially ones like John Dodson, who's doing great things. He's going to tell you a little bit more about his life since after graduation, after BYU Hawaii, and what he's been doing. But we're also going to tell you a little bit about the professional mentorship program. He is one of our mentors. He hasn't. Um, we haven't matched him up yet with a student. But if you apply this semester, somebody will probably may likely be matched up with him or somebody like him and um, you know he's in a position where he's just gone through the experience that you've been through not too long ago and um, can tell you all about how to get where he's going so um, we, we want to thank him and, and Joni Brioni who works in our office is just going to introduce him uh, more formally. Well, it's my opportunity to like to introduce John at this time. Uh, he may not know it, but uh, I'm glad I get to introduce him. Uh, his little sister is a uh, friend with my wife, um, Katie. Um, but our guest speaker and mentor at this time uh, graduated from BYU Hawaii in 2007 with a degree in Information Systems and a minor in Computer Science. He is currently an MBA candidate at BYU Marriott School of Management with emphasis on supply chain, minor in information systems <coughs> management, and a global management certificate. His work experience includes internships at Apple, Deutsch Securities, and Nike. He is also equipped with international credentials, working for Deutsche Bank in Tokyo, Japan, as business analyst and family room specialist for the Apple Store in Osaka, Japan, just to name a few. So um, I'd like to turn the time now and uh, give him, uh, more time for him to uh, uh, introduce himself and, and, and so you can learn more about him. So I give you John Dodson. Yeah, so that's, that's me in a nutshell. I um, just want to give a quick disclaimer. I'm wearing an Apple shirt right now. I am not an Apple employee, not yet. Uh, so I, please don't quote me in any newspaper saying that an Apple employee said this. I don't have any secret insight on new iPhones or an Apple TV or anything like that. Um, I built this on a Mac and exported it over to oh, here you go. So, Whenever I'm, I'm at the BYU MBA program, and whenever we have activities and events, if you want to draw people, you have pizza. So, grateful for that. Glad you guys came out, even though it was just for pizza. I'm sure you'll probably go put something else out of that. So, to talk a little bit about my my background, I'll go ahead and kind of talk through my presentation step by step over things that I've done. As you may see, that I have had a history with iconic. What companies were organizations with iconic logos. So I'll go through and run past each one as I talk about different principles that I can share with you today. So first off, I'm going to talk about my time out. So I'm going to get light there. Uh, with Nike. And so my focus on Nike will be about networking and exploring. So as a student at BYU Hawaii in 2006, I I worked as, a, as an intern at Nike. And the whole process of getting the internship, I went to their website and applied online. It was as simple as that. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to get a faster screen, be able to do the interviews and get a job offer to, to go as an intern. Um, I had spent some time working at Nike Town back when it used to exist in Waikiki. Uh, no longer is there, so you can't use the same route that I took. 
but uh, it worked as a, in sales at Nike Town, so it shoes people, mostly Japanese tourists, and um, was able to turn that into a in Morgan. I was the, this is my, this is the title that I had, I was the Asia Pacific Supply Chain Website Development Intern. So a long title, but that's what it was. Um, during that time, I had the opportunity to take business trips to Tokyo and Seoul. Now, not all interns have this type of opportunity, but it was a great chance for me to, to visit Japan and Korea during my time there. And one of the highlights of what I was able to do at Nike was the work that I did, which was more of a business analysis role, where right? I talked to, talked to different business users, helped to gather the requirements of what they wanted for the system, and actually present to management saying, this is what you guys need to do. And management actually, after I left, they actually took what I suggested, designed it, developed it, and implemented it. So Nike is actually currently using the system that I presented to them uh, for all of the people in the Pacific. So it's, it's great to hear that, to see that I actually did something worthwhile. So things that I learned. Um, networking. So I'll talk about networking. Networking is a part of your business life. And it actually started out through my time working at Nike Town. You know, it's, it's just a retail job. But my one of my managers at the store in Nike Town, uh, he actually was a friend and co-worker of the hiring manager for the role that I did. And so it was through my network, he was able to get some good feedback about the time that I spent at Nike Town and given some good, good words to my manager. And he began to, uh, it helped to really get me a good foot into that position. But I, not only, not only that, so that's kind of this here. Not only that, my time at Nike, you know, I worked in a large corporate environment, and I had the chance to meet a lot of different people. Um, I, I spoke to people from even in different offices. I, um, I kept in touch with one of the guys at Nike in Japan. Um, and I even, I was at Nike, one of my first, I think my first week, I was listening to their, their internal radio channel. They had a show I'm talking to this shoe designer, um, just some random guy at Nike that designed shoes in Japan. And so I sent an email to him and said, hey, I heard you on the radio. Um, it'd be great to be able to, to catch up with you. And actually, he was able to set up a time where I had to visit him in his little office. They were running this little shoe design shop in the middle of Tokyo in some suburb, in some house. And you go to some random neighborhood, they had this Nike design studio in the middle of that that you'd never know design shoes. And so I had a chance to go visit him and um, see his little office out there and he gave me three pair of shoes. So it was a pretty good opportunity. So you're always working on building your network um, throughout, even during your time here, you never know where your classmates are going to end up. And so that's why I put in LinkedIn here, is that really get involved with LinkedIn. Um, I've talked to companies that they, actually, companies actually recruit. They look at LinkedIn, they see people they look around and say, who's going to be a good fit for, for the jobs that we're trying to fill. And they actually do look at LinkedIn. As well as, you know, you go to your chance to um, connect to your classmates. I'm in the MBA program. And I've been, you know, I have a whole lot of classmates that are in my LinkedIn profile. But after we graduate in a year, I'm going to have friends that are working at, um, at Microsoft, at Boeing, at uh, Credit Suisse, you know, all these major companies around the world, just because of my classmates from school. I'm going to have this amazing network of contacts. So in the future, you never know. If I want to talk to somebody at, um, at Procter & Gamble for some reason, I have an interest there, I can reach out to my friends that are working there and say, hey, you know, remember me back from the MBA program, and I want to get in touch with this person I'm looking for this type of opportunity where I want to talk to this type of person. You can reach out to your network. So really start to actively get to LinkedIn because it's a great way to, um, you have your profile on Facebook, but LinkedIn is for professionals, and a lot of companies are using it. So we start going into that, um, especially as a chance we start to do more recruiting in school here. Um, can give you a great opportunity to reach out. And finally, during my time at Nike, um, absorb everything you possibly can. Uh, it was my first internship, and I spent the summer there. But um, I ultimately did not want to work at Nike. Um, I actually was interested in Japan. So I, as I started my internship, I realized, okay, I want to work in Japan. But Nike's Japan office was a lot smaller than I hoped and didn't look like the right opportunity for me. So I didn't pursue a career at Nike. But I tried to absorb as much as I could from that project, learn as much as I can, especially during your first internships out of undergraduate. Learn as much as you can and just take on the opportunity to do everything you can and 
just, just absorb like a sponge. It's my fault. <laughs> so next is the Deutsche Bank. And so the focus points, ambition, focus, and hard work. So my story is uh, going back from BY Hawaii Career Fair to Japan. So Deutsche Bank in Japan had a representative to show up at the BY Hawaii Career Fair. For some reason, they had this major global investment bank sent back from Japan to recruit for the Japan office. It just was kind of a random case. They just decided to do it one year. And I went and talked to him, and ultimately got an internship offer under that. The thing about that, and I'm kind of talking into ambition. Actually, I'll, let me run through this first. Uh, so I did a summer internship in 2007 in Tokyo. Um, as I was able to get a secure a job offer from the internship, which turned into full time, and I, I joined them in 2008 as a new, their new graduate program. Um, they sent me to London and Singapore twice for training. Uh, if you get into these big major global companies, you can have opportunities like this and be able to expand your network across many countries. And then, so I spent three years in investment banking technology with Deutsche Bank. So, so talk about here, the three points, ambition, focus, and hard work. And the first thing is develop the desire for success and show it. You have to want to succeed. You have to <coughs> you know, have that motivation to go out there and, and get to what you want. Um, so when I recruited, they came, they had, some guy came down to BYU Hawaii and was interviewing, and he interviewed a lot of people, talked to a lot of different people, but they only talked to me. They only took me onto interviews, and they were not recruiting for IT. So they were looking for finance, they were looking for operations, they were looking for general management. They didn't find anybody, but they chose me, the IT guy, even though they weren't looking for an IT position. They didn't have any IT positions to fill. But, I was the only one that was driven enough to make something out of it. Um, I talked to the guy that was recruiting. He said that the students at BYU Hawaii weren't bold enough. They were very timid. And so you really have to get to an idea of knowing what you want to do, what you want, and you go for it. You really target that. So then you understand what your focus is. So take the time to learn what you want to do. I know that sometimes it may be hard. You know, you're still in school. You know, you a lot of you may not have had a lot of opportunity to work, to do different things. But start to get a feel of that. Um, one point that I would say is if you're going to look for different opportunities, you don't know if you want to go into a big corporation or if you want to do a small business or if you want to do entrepreneurial work. If you have no idea, go work at a big corporation. Because for one thing, you work at a big company, you get that name on your resume. Nothing stands on your resume like a big name that everyone knows. Second is they have world-class training programs. So you can take advantage of your first opportunity. You might not, you might hate your job. That's fine. You learn, you, you, you absorb as much as you can from it, take advantage of your training, learn as much as you can, and you can go through a route and go through, you know, find another job. But that, that resume builder will be key and very, very helpful. So it won't hurt. You know, you know if you start with a small company and no one has any idea, you're gonna have to fight even harder to explain why your story is good um, and to be able to get other opportunities Then prove yourself through the work that you put in. So you get that job, you get that interview, now it's your, your time to go out and work. And you know, I put in my time, and I was working in investment banking and in Japan, although I, you know, the investment bankers work way more hours than us. There are times when I was putting in, um, you know, I was probably averaging 12 hours a day with the two, two and a half hour commute. Um, sometimes I'll be working six, seven days a week. But you know, you, you put your, your time in, and you can build that experience. And ultimately, the, the effort that you put in now will, will bring you know, rewards to you later. Um, a lot of a lot of different uh, fields and industries are like that. But you know, put in that time. Don't be afraid to work hard, especially if you're still single. That's your chance. So once you have kids, it's going to be much more much harder. But Deutsche Bank globally just doesn't get like there. So next is BYU MBA. So this is where I am now. Um, so I'm part of the Marriott School of Management. Uh, it's a great program out there in Provo. I'm part of the MBA class of 2013, so we have 150 students in that class. And I finished two semesters, 34.5 credits. So my first semester ran 17 credits, and then did 17 and a half last semester. And they're intense classes. And so much so that BYU makes, forces you to sign a contract saying, I will not work or do any outside activities outside of the MBA program during my first year of school. 
So uh, I was poor and I had a lot of classes. But um, it was a fantastic opportunity to learn a lot. Uh, I did a field study with CISLO at their Mexico office. And um, so I actually had the chance to work on a very important project for CISLO. And we had a group of six and they sent, my, my group went to Mexico City, one group went to South Africa, one group went to Singapore. And so you have some great opportunities. Um, and I was able to take advantage of that. I just got back from a study abroad trip to China and Hong Kong. We spent a couple of weeks out there. A part of the group went to Thailand. Uh, and so I've really been making an effort to do a lot of different international experiences while I'm in school. Okay. Um, so the points that I want to focus on at BYU is education and teamwork. So the important thing about an MBA program, you know, if you want to do an MBA, that's great. But go out there and get a job. Get, a, get some experience before you start it. Um, the average amount of work experience in my class is four years. So if you want to do an MBA, think about it. Put, put that in, in the back burner and think about it. But you know, your first thing that you want to do is find a career. Um, so you need to balance. So balancing one education with career goals and aspirations. And I think you should do that as undergraduates too. Um, if you see some of the, the students at BYU, they are you know, some of the juniors. They are working their butt off, looking for a job, and they're working hard. So you have to, you want to do well in your classes, you want to keep your grades up, but at the same time, you know, the whole reason why you're in college is you want to be able to build that career. So spend that time looking for a career. Think about the job that you want to do, work on your resume, work on networking, contacting people, you know, reach out to companies that you're interested in. And that's what we did in the MBA program, and they told us at the MBA program, first day of orientation, grades don't matter. That's not the same for you guys now, but you really have to, Make that effort. If you put in that time and effort, then you can find a lot of success and things you can do. So during my first two semesters, I was out. Um, last year, I went on two trips in New York, went to Atlanta, went to Boston, went to San Francisco, um, Los Angeles, and out to San Jose. So I did a lot of traveling, spent a lot of money, but it was, it was worth the time and effort. Um, the MBA program, we learned through case studies and team applications. So we're working with a lot of people. Um, we spend a lot of time with our, our classmates, sitting in groups, going over the assignments. And kind of case studies is kind of the Harvard approach, where you, you don't spend a lot of time in textbooks, but you actually get a pack of cases and you read about companies and their problems and how are you going to solve those problems. So we spend a lot of that kind of work. And the same thing here, I mean, even. even here at BYU, you have that opportunity to expand your network through teamwork and uh, with you know, smart and su successful peers. And the MBA program, especially so, you know, we have background, people from all over the place, the different backgrounds of companies, from you know, CPA, you know, accountants, to construction guys, to school teachers. We have, I think, one doctor. We have a guy that was in uh, an Army Green Beret. And so you have people with amazing backgrounds that you can learn a lot from each other. And as I talked about, we build a just fantastic network from that. Finally, um, Apple. So about recruiting, interview, and your resume. So I will be spending this summer at Apple, but stepping back, I had a couple of stints at Apple in retail. So I worked at the Alamana store at Apple. That was uh, back in, in 2005. Is it after? Maybe 2006, maybe. Um, and I spent some time at the Apple store, Shinsai Bashi in Osaka, Japan. Um, that was actually after I quit my last job, before I came went to BYU, spent a couple months there. Uh, I'll be doing a 12-week internship in Cupertino, California, just out of San Jose. I'll be working at the Information Systems and Technology Group, and that's, that's their IT department. Um, I actually was looking for a job in Wall Street, did all the recruiting trips, but ultimately found that the best fit for me was on the West Coast, regionally. <coughs> And I was a lot more excited and happy about the opportunities that were at Apple. And when they gave me an offer, it was a, a no-brainer. I was ready to take that. I was even, uh, I even gave up a chance to do a super day at, a, at Deutsche Bank uh, on Wall Street. I turned it down and said, sorry guys, I'm not coming. I'm going to go to Apple. And I have a confidential summer project that I cannot talk to you about. <laughs> so that's, that's the culture of Apple. It's really exciting. It's going to be a great project. Maybe one day I'll be able to share what I did. <laughs> so, no 
no business presentation is, is complete without a Dilbert commentary. But uh, you want to be able to, so things I learned is that I worked for Apple, and I talked about why I did all those recruiting trips, is you want to focus on the recruiting process. You really want to spend time looking for that job, um, expanding your options. You know, first thing I did when I got into school, you know, at that time I was looking at going into investment banking. Not in the banking side, but I was looking at sales and trading. I wanted to be a stock trader. And the first thing I did is I reached out to a guy at um, a, a BYU alumnus that was working at JP Morgan. So I talked to them, I, I started to network like crazy. Made calls, cold called people, got contact information. You know, here, there, there are a lot of BYU, um, BYU Hawaii alumnus, excuse me, alumni that you can reach out to. And you know, go to the career center and see if you can find some names. You know, if there's a certain industry you're interested in, if you're interested in technology, if you're interested in accounting, or you know, general business, whatever. You know, try to find people that have been to BYU and you reach out to them and say, hey, I'm from BYU Hawaii, I'm interested. Don't look for a job. Just find out what they do. Learn about them. Learn about what they were successful at, how they got their jobs, things like that. And as you start to build these things out, people will start to recognize who you are, they'll know your name, they'll understand what you're interested in, and see that this person is driven. And you can really see a lot of success with that. Um, master your story and be ready to tell it. I know you're all still in undergrad programs, but you know you have a story to tell. What makes you different? You know, what have you done? Uh, for me, I can talk about my time. You know, those types of missions. You spent time abroad, or you know, in different places, doing volunteer work. Develop a story that you can tell you know, in several minutes, saying this is why, uh, and this is why I'm interested in working here. Prepare, prepare well for interviews. I hate role playing. Um, I hate role playing as a missionary. You know, I didn't want to sit with a companion and practice, but you know that can help. There, that does have value to it. So you know, you do that in the practicing. But at the same time, learn about the company. Do your research. When you have an interview that's lined up, read everything you can about the company. So when you start talking to them, or even read about the industry, uh, you know, the Wall Street Journal, the Economist magazine, things like that, um, Financial Times where you can understand what's going on in business. So when you talk to them, you can intelligently say that, you know, oh, I read about this. And actually, this, you know, talk more about it. Don't just give the headline. So yeah, I heard that this is happening right now. But actually, you got to expand on it. Show them that you're actively looking to see what's happening on the world, especially in the business world, and how that applies. And they can see that you're, you're really, you're going beyond that. You're actually actively trying to learn and understand what's happening in the world. And finally, perfect your resume and polish up your cover letter. Uh, you can never work in your resume enough. Um, you have to make that, that document perfect. There are companies that will look at your resume and they find one spelling error, one little grammatic error, they'll throw it out. They don't care. They see a big stack of resumes. If you have a problem, oh, this person doesn't care enough about details, I don't want them. Make your resume perfect. Have a lot of people look at it. You know, you look at it over so many times, you'll, you'll it, it's going to be ingrained in your head. You already seen it. Before. So I don't need you going to miss over smaller errors. So have people look at it, and um, I'll, I'll, I can you know if you're interested, I can get you on my resume and see what mine looks like. Um, our MBA program, everyone has the same format. We use the exact same format, and we just change what's inside of it based on each person. Co companies don't care about the design. You know, of course, you want to be easier to read so they can see it, but you want to have the right stuff inside of it. So really work on that. And kind of a story about my time at Apple is that my recruiting, so I was spending all this time looking at Wall Street and went to the career guy at, at BYU and said, hey, you know, I'm, I haven't talked to you yet, but I'm recruiting it for, for a job on Wall Street. But I should probably do a backup. So I heard you looking for people at Nike and Apple. What should I do? He says, okay, well, give me your resume, give a cover letter, and I'll send it to my contacts at Nike and Apple. Because I talked about how I previously worked in retail and done internships. And so I gave him those out. And he forwarded an email saying, yeah, see, I sent my same resume out to Apple. And the very next day, a recruiter called, called me up. And I set up an appointment, had an interview with the hiring manager the following Tuesday. Got a call back on Friday saying, we want to hire you. Are you interested? Saturday morning, I had an offer letter in my hand. So it took Apple less than two weeks to get back to me. And as I talked to my, my hiring manager, I said, so, you know, what 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 did I do well? And he said, your cover letter was well written. I haven't seen someone work as hard for a cover letter as I have in yours. And I could see that you're interested in 
ready where you're at. You know, if you're applying on a, an online system, a lot of times the cover letter will just be fed in, no one ever read it, but you know, they'll try to pull out words, keywords. But when you go through a contact, when you go through someone that um, you're from your network, networking, good, really work hard in your cover letter because you never know who's reading that. So that, that hiring manager saw my cover letter, learned a lot about me, saw my resume, it was a perfect match, he wanted to talk to me. And apparently enough so where they gave me a job in two weeks. That doesn't happen very often. So work on that. Cover letters can be very, very, very powerful. Um, Actually, I didn't put a slide in here, but you know, remember, you're, you're a BYU boy. Remember why you're here. And through all of it, you know, stand, keep your spiritual, spiritual level up. And I've, I've seen that in my career, and I'm, that's where I'm really happy to be back at BYU. I went out to the world, worked, worked in Babylon, you know, making the money. But you know, remember the balance between the spiritual side and you know, the work that you're doing. And you know, stay close to my father. And, and, and follow up with him and, and you know, share your feelings and you know, ask for inspiration of what you're doing. Um, whether it be you know, looking for the right job or you know, how to prepare for your, your interview. Do your work, but at the same time, you know, keep keep on your it. You know, it doesn't hurt to be able to keep that side of us. Um, so just touching back on the key points I just talked about. Really working on your networking. You know, get your LinkedIn profile. Get it done. There's just a lot of lot of stuff out there, and you know, feel free to reach out and, and request to link with me on LinkedIn. Um, spend this time now exploring. You're doing your internships and the jobs that you do. Be ambitious. Really hone down your focus on what you want to do. Try to find that out and work hard. And then you know, when you go to school, an MBA program is great. It's not for everybody, but you know, think about it. It's, it's, uh, and it's great for career switchers. That's what I actually my target was, is to go from technology to finance. It's not going to be that way, but you never know. But I'm going to a great company, so I mean, uh, that's all thanks to my time at BYU. Teamwork, you know, you, every company, you're going to be working with teams. And it's, it's important. And you know, go to school, it's, it's the same thing. Finding with recruiting interviews in your resume. Really work hard at that. Spend the time to get that done. Invest your time in that, because it'll, it'll pay off in the long run start to see about your career. <coughs> Transition's really slow. Okay, well, that's my, my email address down there if you want to reach out to me. Or you can go to LinkedIn and look for me, John Johnson, from BYU Hawaii. You probably should see enough for the final, which page is mine. But any questions? Or is my presentation so thorough and perfect that there are questions? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your family, like your okay. you know, wife, kids, or... Okay. How's it been going through, you know, trying to get through this, your career and advance your career along with you know, maintaining your family? Well, actually, my wife is here. She's right, right oh. here in the middle. Um, so my wife and I actually were married. We're, we're married to other students here. So for me, it was real helpful because I had my spouse there to help support me, uh, give me motivation. And especially, we just had a son. He's almost one. But... Um, I, I, mean, I put in the hours, I work hard, but you know, you, you try to balance it out. Um, I, you know, I spend, spend your time on the weekends. I, I'm not a big video game player, but I do have to be careful when I spend too much time with fantasy baseball. But um, you just remember that family is most important. You know, the, jo the job is to, to provide for family. And that's, that's actually one of the reasons why I decided to switch and leave my pursuit of Wall Street. and move out to the West Coast because I wanted to be able to have a job where I would be happier. If I'm happier, I'm better in the family. And also a more flexible work schedule. And also to be, you know, being in the West Coast. I'm from Hawaii, Hawaii is from Japan. If I'm in New York City, that's a really long flight to visit family. But being in California, we're, you know, we're one hop away from Hawaii or from Japan. So, you know, that, that was a key factor in me determining what I wanted to do. What would my job, what kind of job would be the best to help my family? Anything else? Yes? If you were to go back to your bachelor's, what would be something you wish you emphasized more on and to focus on when preparing for your career? I, I actually, you know, I was really happy with what I was able to get out of it. Um, 
I did a lot of things, but I wish I had done more business. Um, you know, not everyone's going to be doing business. You know, some of you might be engineers, some of you might um, go into you know, arts or you know, humanities types of things. But you know, for you, for those of you that are really interested in, in the business world, take those classes, take the core if you can. You know, understand accounting, economics, finance. Uh, those types of those kind of those types of topics will really, really be helpful for you guys to get out there. So yeah, I would have taken a lot more business classes. In fact, I might have majored as a business major. Try that again. Do you, do you feel that your technology background though is gives you an edge in business at all, or gives you kind of a you know it, it looks like most of your work experience has been with tech computers, right? Um, but yeah, does that skill kind of you think that will you know help you in business? Yeah, technology is powerful. Actually, um, if I had majored in business and not done any technology, I would have been regretting why I wish I had done technology. So you know, everybody uses computers. Every, every company has some sort of technology requirements and needs. And whether it be from a company website to a, an online store or big databases or whatever else. Uh, yeah, if you can take you know, tech classes, you know, IS classes, to learn about you know, even basic programs, you can start to understand about those types of things. Learn Office, learn how to use word processing, make good presentations, those types of things would be very, very helpful. But if, if you don't have any questions now, feel free to reach out um, by email or LinkedIn. And um, yeah, they keep the touch and help out. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> so we have a BYU Hawaii alumni t shirt to share with um, John, and one for his wife as well, if you want to come to the office. Yeah, well, thank you. You can hold it up here for the video camera to see. <laughs> my, my wife also is an alumni. She actually had a little higher GPA than I did. <laughs> <laughs> My sister over here, she graduated from BYU Hawaii and well back an associate back when they had a two year program. Oh. But she's a business major from the University of Hawaii. Oh. And here's a, a pin that you can wear on your tie or wear in the church and tell people about BYU Hawaii. So thank you so much. Um, I want to quickly say something about the professional mentorship program. You all got the brochure so you know what to do. Um, there's a portion there that says how to apply. Let's see. How do I apply? Um, basically, if you've already had your uh, resume reviewed by Career Services, you just need to go on the alumni website, alumni.byuh.edu, and there's a form that says application form. Click on that link and you just fill out the form and you upload your resume there. Um, if you haven't had your resume reviewed, that's the first step is to go to Career Services, have your resume reviewed, and then come and apply on the alumni website. So it's all in the brochure. Come to the alumni office if you have any questions. Um, does anyone have any questions about applying or how the program works? If you've already done it before, you can do it again. It's every semester. The deadline is this Friday. So if you want to do it, apply by Friday online. We'll have your name and we'll match you with the mentor. And how we do the matching is basically on where you want to work. So if, you, if you're from uh, Korea and you want to live and work in Korea, we'll match you with somebody in Korea that's in a, in a profession that you want to be in. So that's the uh, feedback so far from students. has been that they've loved the program, they've loved the match they've had. And um, basically, once we match you up, we want, we want you to come into our office. We'll notify you that you've been matched up. You'll come into the, op the alumni office and we'll tell you a little bit more about how to act and behave when you're in a mentor relationship. Um, things, you know, do's and don'ts. We don't want you asking directly your mentor to give you a job or anything like that. You just ask your mentor questions, kind of informational interviews, um, and ask if they have any advice, and we'll kind of coach you through that process. So thank you all for coming. Hope you enjoyed it, and have a good night. <laughs>